After trying out the trivial applications with the Adreno of blinking a light or writing something to the serial port, it would be nice to connect another external device to it. In this case, we're going to do an alphanumeric dot matrix liquid crystal display. The type of the device is often described as a Hitachi HD44780 LCD controller. While that device was developed by Hitachi in the 80s, the actual command sequence and pin usage was imitated by many devices and is used today. The device has 16 pins and the names of the pins or the labels are printed in small print on it, numbered left to right, 1 to 16, they are ground positive voltage between 3.3 and 5 volts. The third pin is a contrast adjustment. Pin 4 is used for register select. If the value is low, it's a command. If the value is high, it's data. Pin 5 is used for read-write. In most situations, read doesn't make any sense, so we have the value permanently connected to ground so that it's always structured for write. Pin 6 is named clock, and it is something that's used to say once we've set the values on all the other pins, now is the time to read it. You need to recognize that setting each pin takes an instruction, and so not all the pins will be set at the same time. So while the pins are being set, the device ignores what's happening, but once you trip the clock signal, then that tells the device now is the time to look at everything and do something with it. Pins 7 to 14 are named bits 0 through 7. You can operate this simply in a 4-bit mode, which requires fewer pins on the controller and fewer wires, though more instructions, because you send half as much data each time. We will be using just the 4-bit mode, so we will use pins 11 to 14. Then, finally, pins 15 and 16 are the plus and minus for the backlight display. A picture of it wired up is provided on Wikipedia. Typically, one uses a breadboard, other types of devices to adjust the voltage being sent on particular lines. But it is possible to connect the device directly to the Adreno without using a breadboard and without using these additional pieces. And that is what I'm going to be demonstrating here. The actual layout that you use depends on what instructions you give when you're writing your program. In my case, I have a breadboard picture here and an actual schematic picture here. One thing to note on the schematic, if you look carefully, the pins are labeled D0 through D13, but in this particular image, pin D3 and B D2 got swapped. So I'm using them as if the one between 1 and 4 are 2 and 3 in that order. One of the things that is a little confusing in some of the videos I watched on how to do this is they simply provided the pin layout but didn't give much description. And if you didn't have the breadboards or other things, it would be confusing. Here, notice the Adreno has two grounds here, has grounds here as well. So there are 
four grounds, at least four grounds available, and we're going to use each of them. The device also has 5 volt here under the power item. There's two 5 volts above 22, and there's also a 3.3 volt in the power area. So we're going to use four pins from the power area. 3.3 will go to pin 15. Pin 15 is the backlight anode, and then pin 16 will be the ground, so we'll take that to ground. Then we'll take 5 volts from the device and run it to pin 2. Pin 3 will also be a ground. This is the contrast, and the device will work if you just simply show contrast as 0. Pin 4 is the register select to do either command or data, and that needs to be configured to one of the digital logic pins. The Adreno Mega 2560 has 54 digital pins. They are numbered from 0 to 53 and can be controlled independently. And in your program, you may choose what pins to use to connect. So I'm going to pick pin 2 on the Adreno and connect it to pin 4 on the device. So my read-write will be on pin 2. The next one is the clock or the signal, and you will see that listed as E or echo on the display device. I'm taking pin 6 and running it to 3. There are then the four pins. 11 to 14 are bits 4 to 7. I've labeled those as blue, and I'm running those to 4 to 7 on my Adreno. The digital pins here could be anything. The 2 through 7 is simply what I've chosen because it keeps the numbering convenient and puts all the pins together in the digital side. So we have our power and our digital side. I'm going to now start connecting them. I have a group of jumpers, and these are male to female jumpers. So this is a group of four of them. I'm going to take this group of four and plug it in to positions 2 through 7 on the Adreno. So here we have 2, 3, or actually 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So there are our, seven, our six pins that are on the digital side. We also have a series of pins that we want to put on the power side. So I'm going to take and use the three for ground, three, and five. So I'm going to say the three volt. the 5 volt and the one of the four grounds that we're going to use. The 3 volt I'm running over to pin 15. So we'll see that here. The ground and 5 volt, ground is black, we will put that on pin 1. 
and then we will put the 5 volts on pin 2. So now we have ground 5 volt, 3 volt. We will take another ground and put it on pin 16 and that gives us light on our LCD, a backlight display. No characters are showing, but we have at least the backlight. So I'm going to take a ground, put it on pin 3, then I'll take pin 4, and on the LED, and notice now we've got one row of color of uh, lights. I'm going to take this and put it on pin four. That is our pin four is the register select. Pin five is another ground, so we will take another ground, go to pin 5, then we will take line 3, which is the clock or signal, and that is next here. We will attach it. Then we will take the remaining four lines and put them on the digital lines of 4, 5, 6, 7. And they need to be done as 4, 5, 6, 7, which is the order that they are coming from the board. So here we have 4, 5, and 6, 7. Okay. We've connected up 12 lines, and that gives us a display. Now, we want to try a program for it. We have created an LCD object, so we have included the liquid crystal dot H. We've defined a structure, or an object, of liquid crystal, and the pins can be whichever pins you're choosing to use. The first argument is for the pin that will go to the register select. Is it a command or data? The second argument is the line that will be used for the clock, the signal that I've given you all the data, now please execute it. And then the remaining four can be four, five, six, seven, can be whatever pins or digital lines you've chosen to use to send to four, five, six, seven on the LED. It could be any one of the 54 that aren't otherwise in use. So, defining it that way, these numbers aren't important, they just need to match what you've chosen here. One of the areas that I see on some of the other videos that discuss this is people say, oh, you should have used different pin numbers. Well, that's only if you've set it up differently on the board. So we will begin the LCD, define it as 16 characters and two rows, set the cursor to the beginning of the first row, print out uppercase, 16 uppercase letters, set the cursor to the beginning of the second row, print the 16 lowercase letters. And you may see here I still have code left over from the blinking. So we will confirm that we have the port set, and then we will watch the lights. You should see the running light 
blink, the LED will start to blink at a one second on, one second off. There'll be two other LEDs that blink briefly while the code is being installed. So the transmit and receive lights will blink during that time. So watch for transmit and receive and then the thing to run. Also watch the display. I see the light blinking. We could open up a serial monitor and it shows hello board 2 and then depending on the angle that you look at the device you may be able to see the numbers show. So that's talking from the Adreno to an LCD display.